Hi, I'm Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technologies. We get a lot of questions about high yielding wheat, so I wanted to spend a little time with you here today talking about some of the things that the European producers are doing to raise super high wheat yields. So we're standing in, in England right now, on the east coast of England. There's been a number of world record yields up and down the east coast of England, as many people have, have, have been aware of, the people that have followed that, in addition to the South Island and New Zealand. Those are generally the two areas that produce very high wheat yields. They've got long growing seasons. For example, this field was planted in October and now it's the middle of August the following year. So it almost has a birthday, not quite. It should have been harvested by now, but we got about an inch of rain last night. So I wanna go through some of the things that they're doing with high wheat yields here on the east coast of England. So number one, most of the fields are seeded on narrow rows. For example, this field was seeded on five inch row spacing. Some guys are seeded on four, but five would definitely be the most common. And that's because many years of research, of, of research has shown that narrow rows create the highest yields. So they do an exceptional job at seeding time, getting the seeds in the ground to a consistent depth. So they emerge at the same time. So they tiller at the same time, they head out at the same time, so you can apply your fusarium fungicides at the same time. So uniformity is critically important. That begins at seeding time, and then that follows up through the season with the nitrogen applications. A lot of growers here, this field an example, they're applying liquid nitrogen with stream borers, with a sprayer. You can't beat the accuracy and uniformity of a liquid application system through a sprayer. It's uniform all the way across the sprayer. So as long as it's set up and calibrated correctly with swath control and tram lines, you can drive through the field and there's no overlaps, there's no skipped areas. You know, it's much better than a spinning disc spreader that often street fields, especially on windy days like this one. This field then had sulfur applied uh, they've obviously been cutting back on environmental emissions or sulfur dioxide emissions so most fields get sulfur so this fields had about 20 pound of sulfur it had about 220 pounds of applied nitrogen on this field it also has copper and zinc most of the producers here are high on copper and zinc they're they're responsive in the higher yield range this field has also had a strong and robust fungicide program. It's had at least three fungicides, and I know it's had three different growth regulators applied, which shortens the varieties and stiffens the stems significantly so the fields stand up. We absolutely have to avoid lodging at all costs because when fields lodge, you know, you're running that much material through the combine, the yields are lost indirectly through the lodging, and then the combine loses more out of the back when it's trying to pick it up off the ground. So you've got to keep a high yielding field standing up and that's why they use three growth regulators in this field. So they start with short varieties and then back them up with the growth regulator. From a point of view of yields, I've ridden with a few combine operators on this trip and I've seen average field yields harvested that have been in the 10 to 12 ton per hectare range their metric over here with their yields, but that would equate in the US to 149 to 179 bushels per acre average on a field. Now I've seen yield monitors as high as 16 tons per hectare. One of the yield monitors was calibrated the day before, and 16 tons per hectare just in a region, in a field, would equate to 240 bushels per acre. Now the field I'm in right now has a history of high yields, they're estimating, and we've done some yield checks too, uh, they're estimating it's gonna make 13 or 14 tons per hectare, and 14 tons a hectare would be 210 bushels per acre. So I would bet there's some 16 or 17 uh, ton per hectare regions within this field, which would be yields of 240 or 250 bushels per acre. So there's a lot of things going on, but get the wheat in the ground to a consistent depth, so all the seeds come out of the ground uniformly, Put an appropriate nutrient package on it according to the yield potential at the right time evenly and accurately following it up here with good fungicides growth regulators and ideally some good weather to get it harvested thanks for watching oh one last thing i didn't mention a lot of people ask me about rainfall this area gets between 20 and 24 inches of annual rainfall a year so that's a common question thanks for watching